majority of people that are beginning to get a half a clue. But they know that the people only have a half a clue because they know they never gave the people more than a half a clue. So here comes a bunch of people out here doing blog talk shows and other types of things and YouTube shows to try to wake people up, and they're trying to figure out the best way to shut that stuff down. Now, these um, Pharisees or so-called Ash uh, Ashkenazim, the Rothschild family, they, as I told you before, uh, got control of the Bank of England, and they founded the Bank of England. Actually, they got control of England's money, let me put it that way, and then they founded the Bank of England in 1694. The first bank of the United States that they set up under George Washington through Alexander Hamilton was in 1791. They got a 20-year charter to have their United States bank set up. Um, the United States took out some sort of a small loan at some ridiculously high interest rates, and that inflated the cost of everything by like 70-something percent all of a sudden. Um, in uh, 1812, there was a war, and people, everybody's probably heard of the War of 1812, and there are a lot of people that know about it, but there are a lot of people that don't. They're like, what, what is all the wars? If they don't know. They just know, oh, there was a War of 1812 and the Indian War and the this war or that war, but they don't know. The War of 1812 took place because Nathan Mayer Rothschild ordered the British crown to declare war on the United States because of the fact that when their charter expired, the, the, expired, the charter I just told you that they had set up in 1791, when that expired 20 years later, Congress refused to renew the charter. And because Congress refused to renew the charter for the Bank of the United States that the Rothschilds set up, this, this took place in 1811. The Rothschilds had uh, the British Crown declare war on the United States, and that was the War of 1812. And it didn't end until 1814. Now, fortunately, the United States was not defeated, um, but this whole skirmish caused Congress to go on and pass a bill that allowed them to set up the second Bank of the United States, like I told you guys last week. And that took place in 1816, and they got another 20-year charter. Now, this is where um, things start getting real hairy. First of all, the Europeans don't know. We're not, this is not about them. This is about us. The Europeans do not know, or maybe they do and don't give a shit. Um, they don't seem to remember or care that when they showed up in the United States, they found all of our copper-colored, bushy-haired butts running around here. And because of the oppression, the poverty, the hunger, and, 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 and the abuse that was going on, which is why the Anglicans didn't want the Catholics to get back in uh, uh, the, the crowns or into the government of Britain, uh, which is why they brought in uh, King Billy, to get rid of King James II because he was trying to bring the Catholics back in. They just remembered the, a, a massive abuse and the massive torture and torment and the murders they underwent under the, 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 uh, the, uh, the heads of the church because the people were crazy. So they didn't want to be under the church because of the constant nonsense they had to deal with. But they don't seem to recall how they had to run away from that nonsense and they got here, and our people were like a light of the world. For lack of better words, we were a light of liberty, and they showed up, and we did what we could do to help them out. We taught most of them how to, how to uh, uh, build, how to cook. As a matter of fact, I have a brother, and I, I don't really want to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway, because, you know, what happens is when we say things and we figure things out and we start putting it out, these cut and, these cut and taste specialists behind us, and they start trying to change things, and they start infiltrating things to create nonsense where there should be none. But we're going to talk about another inbred crew, the Amish, who hopefully they're not totally crazy. I, I, I don't know. I, I haven't been around them, so I couldn't say. They seem okay as far as I can tell from way across the country. But I have a young brother. He's a young brother. Uh, he went from Southern California to Los Angeles, and he went to a few different states about two years ago, a year and a half maybe. Um, he went to um, Pennsylvania, 
and I don't remember where in Pennsylvania, but while he was out there, he attended a open market. Some people call them uh, flea markets. Some people call them, you know, uh, uh, yards. It's not a yard sale, but it's some kind of open public market where people are out selling their wares and their goods. And he approached this very young um, female Amish, and, you know, he was looking to see what to buy and whatever, and he was, I don't know if he was going to buy anything, but he was looking to see what they had for sale. And he was talking to her, and he basically said to the young sister, you know, I admire your people. You know, it's, I'm really proud of you guys, the way you were able to stay off the grid and out of the reach of these crazy people that are running stuff, you know. And she was like, well, wow, you know, that's really deep of you to say that. You know, these are not the words. I wasn't there, so I can't quote it exactly, but I'm going to give you the general gist. Most people don't even talk to us. They just think we're some kind of joke, and they laugh at us, and they mock us and stuff like that. And he was like, oh, no, nah, man, never that. You know, a lot of our people are trying to figure out how to do what you guys are doing and get them up under these crazy people, too. And she was like, your people? Who, who are your people? And he said, well, you know, you probably know, like most of the world, you probably know us as African Americans, Negroes, blacks, colored, but we're beginning to remember that we were the people that were found here. And she said, oh, my gosh. So she called over some other people to come and talk to him. Ultimately, they wound up being in a huddle. It was him, uh, two young female Amish sisters, and three male Amish brothers. One of the Amish brothers was a young cat. The other cat was middle-aged, and the other cat was an older cat. And then there's this youngster that's a brother standing there talking to these five. Um, they made it very clear to him that they were so glad to hear from him and talk to him. And what they said to him was, you know, we have been taught all of our lives, throughout our generations, everybody knows that there were people here when we arrived. But we're not ever told who they were. All we're told is when we got here, we knew how to build, but we didn't know how to build like these people knew how to build and that these people showed us how to build these people showed us how to grow, and they taught us how to survive here. And we, everybody keeps asking, well, who were they? Who were they? And they never would tell us who it was. All they would tell us is it is not those people that are on the reservation. We can tell you that much. The people that taught us everything that we need to know were not the people on the reservation that they are calling Indians now. All five of them stood there and told that brother that, that that is what they're taught in their schools, and they've been taught that through the generations, but no one would ever tell. And they told him, now, we didn't know if they weren't telling us because they didn't know or if they weren't telling us because they didn't want to know, but what you're telling us now, that explains everything. Now it makes sense. So I'm saying all that to say, these Europeans that got over here, they screwed up and forgot what nonsense they ran from. And I've said this before, and I'm going to keep saying it. I know I'm repeating, and I'm going to keep repeating until, until you guys get it. Because there are things that we as melanin-rich people need to understand. These nuts, because they forgot, they allowed people who they were running from to come back in here and infiltrate what we had helped them to do to liberate themselves from the yoke of oppression that they were undergoing in Europe. Now, a lot of Europeans don't talk about it. They, maybe they don't know. It's very possible that they don't even know their own culture. Maybe their parents didn't tell them the past like our parents don't want to tell us the past. Remember, most of us that are over 50 or over 40, when Roots came out, we all got on this whole man, you know, we went and sat down with our elders, and we were with the pen and the paper and the, uh, the tape recorders, and we wanted to know our roots uh, following this movie because we were trying to trace our roots back to Africa. And most of us, when we went to our parents with that stuff, one, a lot of them didn't want to talk about it because obviously there's some things that they underwent that they didn't want to be reminded of. But two, most of them said, we didn't come from no Africa. We are not from no Africa. And we all thought they were on some self-hatred stuff. But we didn't understand what they were trying to say because they didn't say what they were trying to say. Like the Amish elders aren't saying what they are trying to say. And like, some of these Europeans, their people either aren't saying what needs to be said or they don't know what needs to be said, so they're not telling them. And because of that, they allow them to get off on some, oh, we're white tangent, and we're superior tangent, and you niggers need to go back to Africa tangent. Or why don't we just hang y'all and start lynching y'all again? Well, the fact of the matter is they've been misled to do these hangings and lynchings. First of all, a lot of that is the culture, but that goes back to the ominism. 
that goes back to burning people whole. That goes back to the Phariseeism. That goes back to tortuous deaths. That goes back to pain and suffering. That goes back to a cruel and unusual way to die. That's what it's all about. So when they came over here running from what they were going through as, under Pharisee and, uh, Phariseeism, they brought it to us and tried to turn it on us uh, based on color. And that occurred because, again, poor so-called whites were unifying with poor so-called blacks, or what you guys call whites and blacks. So they had to create a rift and separate that. But what is taking place is this whole thing that I'm trying to give you guys right now to clarify this stuff for you about uh, how this is going down and how these, these hands of the, the crowned heads of Europe and the heads of the church who are being manipulated by the heads of the banks or the international financiers who are all a part of the same little thing that I'm talking about, these people are not aware that when the, when the, when the Rothschilds took over, the financial operations of the Catholic Church worldwide in 1823, after having already taken over uh, the finances of England, since the Roman Catholic Church and its Pope are the ones that sent a lot of crazy mercenaries around the world to subdue and uh, overtake everyone's empire. Um, and a lot of that was done under the crown heads, you know, for the king, we're doing it for the queen, or whatever the case may be. When they let people get control of their money, then they lost control of the control to a certain extent. But they're still in control in as much as they're all working together, but they're not aware that the control is the control. Now, in 1823, this may be when, when they got a hold of the Catholic Church finances worldwide, that might be what prompted uh, President Monroe to initiate the Monroe Doctrine, which also took place in 1823. The Monroe Doctrine basically was issued because he was trying to keep these crazy people up off of here. Um, and what it basically says in, in a summary is that the, the crown heads and the European rulership would no longer colonize the Americas or interfere with affairs of the sovereign nations located on the Americas, such as the United States, Mexico, and others, and in exchange for the Europeans not interfering over here on these continents, we as the United States will stay neutral. That was that whole neutrality doctrine. We will stay neutral in any war between European powers and other European powers, and we will stay out of uh, um, uh, wars that are, are take place between European powers and any European colony unless that colony is situated somewhere on the Americas. And if you guys come and start shit with anybody anywhere on the Americas, we in the United States are going to take that as a threat to the United States. Now, in 1832, does anybody have a question before I go on? Well, so far, um, there was a question in the chat room. Um, they wanted to know how can they trace the aboriginal roots. <laughs> that's that's the only question so far. So off topic, so off topic. No disrespect, but, uh, you know, I can't help you with that one on, on tonight's call unless I have time when I'm done with this right here. Um, but I, I, well, you know what, since the question is asked, uh, go to the Mormon Family History Center. Um, they're more than happy to help you find your stuff. However, when you go, you need to have as much information as possible from your elders. You need to know your mother's um, maiden name. You need to know what city, state, and especially what county she arrived on earth in and approximately when that was. You need to know the same information for your father if you can get that information for your father. If at all possible, you want to know your grandparents. You need to know the names of their sisters and brothers and things like this because sometimes you won't find your person, but you'll be like, oh, well, that's my family because that's Uncle so-and-so and Auntie so-and-so, and you'll see them all in the same house. You go to the Family History Center. You pull up. You go to uh, uh, I can't think of what the machine is called. You, you, type, you go to a little machine, and you put your last name of the person that you're looking for 
into this machine, and it'll tell you where to go and pull the uh, the reel, the 